get you all caught up on my monogram 55 Ford rat rucker that I built for the United Scale Automotive Content Creators Group Build or USACCGB. This was a fun build. Of course, any anything that's a rat wrecker's got to be cool, down and dirty, a little bit of rust. But all this stuff here that I did, it's all in video one. That's kind of how I left everything off, and you can see in video one how I did all that. But, this, but anyway, let's get to painting this thing and get this thing assembled and finished up. And I've sprayed all my parts with the hairspray. I just took everything outside and shot it with hairspray, put a nice coat on it. And then let it sit for about a half an hour. And for the frame, I painted it with the uh, acrylic Ammo MIG bone color. And I thinned it a little bit with the Vallejo. I don't have any thinner for the MIG, but this works out just fine. And here's the frame. It's all painted. And I didn't worry about doing a, a great job on it, because again, it's going to be weathered. For the bumpers, or the front bumper, and the grill, I painted it with the Vallejo Ivory Color. And again, mixed it with the Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. What I did with this, I also shot it with the hairspray, let it dry, shot it with the Ivory, let it dry, rubbed it off, and then I got the Rust Color, and then I shot it again as I'm doing, and I've done this a couple, three times to get two or three layers to get multi-colors. For the body of the truck, I'm going with the acrylic ammo MIG Blood Red, and again, mixing it with the airbrush thinner, and just shooting a couple light coats on it. And this doesn't take much paint because it's already primed in that color. But that's what the truck's looking like. And I'll go with about three coats on this also. More paint on the sides and on the roof because again it's going to be weathered so the roof should be a lighter color. And then what I will do on my last coat is I will get the hood put on here and make sure it's a lighter color than what the sides are. On the hairspray technique, I just take an old paintbrush and I will dip it in water and I will start moving it around and the water will go through the acrylic and start getting rid of the acrylic because of the hairspray and then it will reveal what's underneath, which is that primer color. Then after that step's done, we'll go in and do more steps with some rust effects and some more weathering and some dust effects. And then the uh, rear end will paint black, maybe a rusty color. But this thing's coming along. It's, it's, it's fun to do. I love the weathering. There's an idea of what the grill looks like. But definitely no chrome, just uh, the tan and the red and the, uh, the ivory color. Here's my little cup of water. I just take a little water, I said an old paintbrush. Get it wet, put the water on there, and just let it activate. You can't be in a hurry doing this. And again, I've let this paint set for probably a half an hour. And I didn't put it on too thick, so it'll start coming off here pretty quick. But you just keep rubbing. Just keep rubbing, and you're going to start seeing the paint come off here in a second there we go just lightly rubbing I'm gonna do this here part in real time for you the rest of it's very boring sit here for an hour while I rub the whole entire truck you don't want to see that but I wanted to do this here part in real time to give you an idea. But the tread plate, tread, can't talk. The tread plate is pretty easy because it's it's up high. So I'm grabbing the high spots, which is fine. And I'm gonna start getting all them nuts and bolts that I've done too. And 
and they'll start showing. Get the paint off those. Let me wipe it. Let's see where we're at. But that kind of gives you an idea of what we got versus that side there. So I'll get to doing all this and get going on it. Well, here's here's the frame that I've been working on. And of course, I had to take most of all the paint off the spool. But it's getting there. A little update on where we're at. I just, I'm not digging on how the cab turned out. It just, I didn't get the look I wanted. I don't know, maybe it's because the color of red was too close to the primer. And it very well might be. Again, I use that blood red from Ammo. The hood's the same way. Uh, the reason this glass is taped in, I'm getting ready to run my windshield marks. And what I'll do with that is figure out which way the wipers go. Obviously, they go that way, the way they're put on. So I'll trace my marks. I'll cut it out on paper. Lay that down on some tape, cut out the tape, and then tape across the windshield pull that off and then when I do my buff coat I'll spray some buff over it lightly from far away and it'll give the marks of where the windshield wipers went and you'll see that here in a little while it's the front grill the front grills getting there it's not too bad I like the white with the red still thinking about going with this front bumper not sure not sure if I'm gonna go with that front bumper or maybe make some type of push bumper I'm not sure on that yet the toolbox is coming out all right. I got this toolbox from the scrap bin over there, or parts bin, and I added a bracket down here where it will sit down into the back piece area. And this is kind of like a little model of itself. You hear guys talking about a model within a model. And so what I've done with this toolbox, I obviously cleaned it up, added the bracketry, getting it painted, cut off the molded in handle, added wire, four handle which gives it a lot of detail and then I'll probably get in my decal box and add all kinds of racing stickers onto this toolbox booms turning out pretty good I'm liking how this is going there's the rear of course it's going to go like that but it's getting there it was time to scratch build a hook, and the way I did that, I took a thick piece of plastic, drew the hook out, and just started cutting and carving. It's not too hard to do. It did get a little fragile the closer I got to a finished hook, and a um, little heads up, it ended up being a disaster. But um, I needed some cord and chain for the wrecker part. And I went to Hobby Lobby and picked up some nice chain that I thought would fit the part. Laid it all out and cut my two pieces to length. These boxes. These boxes are very cool from Value Gear. I love Value Gear products. They offer a lot of products for us model guys. It's all extra stuff you can add on for stowage and things like that. Anything from military to automotive, you've got to check out Value Gear. they got tons of cool stuff. But anyway, I pulled out a couple boxes I want to use. I'm going to put them in the front seat. And I think they're going to look pretty convincing. Those are the two colors that I painted my boxes. Trying to get it kind of that box brown color. There's the two colors I used to paint my cable for the winch. I got everything going together there. There you can see the toolbox that I set in. I love that toolbox. I thought it would come out pretty cool. I posted that uh, on a few pages on Facebook and all the guys liked it. So I was really, really happy to get a nice response on that toolbox. I added a light there also, but there I'm getting everything glued together. Just can't ever have enough clamps, 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 clamps. But um, as I was working on the hook, there's my broken hook. So I was kind of out of commission and searched around, searched around, ended up finding a hook. It took me a while to find one, but there's my new hook on the left, my broken hook on the right. I took a sheet of paper and kind of traced out my windshield and then I just kind of hand drew how the wipers would go. There they are. Then I cut them out of the paper, took these, put them on my tape that I used to mask off my interior when I did my running boards. And then I'll cut that out, 
that one out and then they will get placed onto the windshield. Okay, got it cut out. Just taped them onto the windshield. Now I can just take the windshield out. And it's going to be ready to pop in later on after she's painted. Here's what we've done. I love this here paint. This Tester's Rust. If you could only get one rust color, this is probably my favorite. What I did is I shook it up real good. Opened up the cap. Another junky brush. And... Just dabbed it in various places. Let that dry. Took this color, dark rust. Got it from the cap. Dabbed it in places. It didn't show up much because it's pretty much the same color as the primer. Then I took this color, the medium rust from AK. Grabbed a bunch of it. You can see where I dabbed it on. And that's all dry now. It's been dry now for about five hours. And now I'm going to seal all that. I picked up this acrylic from Vallejo, this big bottle. Trying to save a little bit of money. This was about the same price as a, a flat Model Master or something. It wasn't much money. So I'm going to use this, see if it works out. Again, since you're weathering, you can do a lot of experimenting. Another reason I like to weather, I can experiment with stuff I've never used before. And if it messes up, we can fix it. And sometimes a mess up works out to your advantage. So I'm going to go spray this and get that all sealed. All right, I got everything sprayed. You can see it looks all wet and glossy, but it's going to dry flat. One of the biggest tips I can give on weathering is let things dry. Weathering cannot happen in, in one day. you got to let things dry. Let each coat dry. I let all my dabbing dry for about six, maybe eight hours. Now this is sprayed, it's time to shut down the model booth for the night, so it'll be nice and dry, you well, 12 hours from now. So I like to let things dry for at least 12 hours, if not 24 hours. I gotta admit, I'm running out of time, I haven't had much time to work on this, and it's due in about a week. So I decided to kind of resort to a technique that I love, that I've been doing for a long time, it's called the salt technique. Just table side salt. I took my hood. I wet it down. You can still see it's wet. And I just sprinkled a little bit of salt on it. And I did that also with the body. I just got done doing it. It's all wet. And I just sprinkled some fine salt on it. The trick to this is not to put too much on. I mean, you can. It's yours. Every car weathers differently. Ages differently. But I've always liked doing the finer salt because this is a small scale. So, it's still all wet. We'll let this dry for a day. I'm going to head to work and maybe tonight or tomorrow I'll have time to paint this. And I've still got to find a red I'm going to paint this with because again the ammo blood red just did not work out. It ended up being pretty much the same color as the primer so nothing worked. So I'm going to find a different red or maybe a whole different color. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with this. Okay, we chose a red. Going with this Tamiya XS7 red. It's the gloss. I got the hood done. Shooting it through my airbrush. And we started on the cab. Show you a difference right there. What we're dealing with. And I'm not going to put this on too heavy because, again, it's going to be weathered. Right. Get this finished up, and I'll show you the end result. Got it painted, and it's dry. I only waited probably you know, 15 minutes. I painted this 15 minutes ago. Just enough time to clean the airbrush and take apart the airbrush and clean it out. A lot of people ask me what airbrush I use. It's a Grex. I think the Grex compressor is set at I don't know, 20 or something. I've, I've never even checked it because I've got this little valve here that can also adjust. So if it's set at 20 and I need it dialed down to 15, instead of going to the compressor, I can just use this valve. If I go check and see what that air compressor is set at. Yep, it's at 20. 
So again, this little valve that's in line, which is really nice, it adjusts and it can turn the air down without having to mess with the compressor, which is cool. So now all I'm going to do on the salt technique is just start rubbing it off. And we'll see what we come up with. And if I don't like that well enough, I can always take a piece of sandpaper and rub it. But usually with your finger is just fine. Again, I just put a very light layer of paint on this. what we're getting it's looking good I'll play with this a little bit more one thing another tip on doing this if you do the salt technique you want to make sure all the salt is out of the cracks and crevices because when I go paint the trim around the window which I'll probably do it black as a rubber seal and when I paint the windshield wipers the paint will actually go over the salt if you don't get rid of the salt. So you want to get rid of all the salt in those cracks and layers. And all I do is just usually take a toothpick and go around that and make sure it's all gone. So there's a little nice tip for the uh, salt technique. And believe me, I've left salt in there before and you don't see it. Then when you start painting it, you got a, a bump that just magnifies and it doesn't look good. So... Make sure you run a little toothpick around here, get everything out, and you'll be good to go. Here's the hood. I'm not trying to do this as a a, a beater or a, a piece of junk. Again, it's kind of it, it is a rat rod wrecker, but it's it's a little bit nicer than just a rusted out hawk. That's looking pretty good. I like how that's looking. I think I've got the body to where I want it. Did a lot of, instead of using sandpaper after I got all the uh, salt off, I used paper towels and did a lot of rubbing with paper towels. And you'd be surprised how much paint the paper towels will take off. But anyway, now that I've got the body to where I think I want it, I taped the hood in and I taped the glass back in. And instead of shooting it with the buff color, I think I'm going to just shoot it with my... Uh, Matt clear shoot right in there kind of just missed it straight forward and i'll obviously spray everything but where the blue tape is pull the blue tape off and then i'll have a dirty windshield i just misted it on it you really can't tell there's much on there but that's how you want it you don't want to overload it in fact i'm kind of wondering if i got too much on there by just doing a couple quick light squirts but It'll be all right. We'll uh, pull this off after the uh, clear dries and see what we've got. Disaster 2 kind of came when I started mocking things up and realized that my little hand crank that I made, and I'm pointing at right there, I wasn't going to be able to hand crank that winch, obviously. I wasn't even thinking when I put all that together. So I'm sitting there thinking, what am I going to do now? I, I was almost going to leave it that way, but it was just too unrealistic. On working that winch you obviously can't crank it do a half a crank so I uh, grabbed some more plastic and just started putting pieces together and trying to come up with like a little electrical box and put some nuts and bolt detail on it some lights on it some switches on it and I think I come up with a pretty convincing box after I painted and weathered it uh, let me know down below what you think about that little box right there that's on the side to run the winch. I got a couple of switches, red and white lights. It's wired up. You can see the wire coming down from it. I thought it turned out pretty good. Nice little save there from a big mess up. There's one of them boxes I painted from Value Gear put into the interior. I thought it added a neat little, little uh, something something to that interior there. 
love the value gear. Here's something, if you're weathering, another tip on weathering, be careful on what license plates you choose. As you notice, this isn't a complete absolute beater rust bucket. It's something you'd maybe see out west. So I chose the California license plate. I didn't want to do Michigan or anything because it was a pretty nice vehicle. There's the finished product. I think this thing turned out really, really cool. I had a great time with it. I just, man, it was, it was super fun. I highly recommend weathering. You guys got to try it. But as you notice, um, I've got a lot of things wired on it. The light there is wired that you have on at night when you're trying to hook something up. The electrical box and brake lights are wired. Slam down on the ground, a thing is sitting in the weeds sitting on airbags so it can actually raise up got my chains hooked up the cable um, I didn't go with the black strap piece that I made it just didn't look right once I painted it I may redo it but I do have it if I ever want to add it on the hook ended up working out after that disaster my little electrical box ended up working out after that disaster but what a fun build. This monogram truck is so fun. Of course, trucks are a blast because you can do so much with them. But I don't know. Let me know down below what you think about it. We'll see you guys on the next video on Throttle Power.